ladles and jelly spoons. Welcome back to Badgerworks. Today, this. Uh, this is a trumpeter branded turntable for displaying models on. Um, you've seen me use it in a couple of videos now. Um, it's a nice little bit of kit. Basically what it is, it's a motorised turntable. And you can see here it has uh, an on off on switch for high speed and low speed. Uh, so you turn it one way and it turns slowly and you turn it the other way and it turns a little bit quicker. So it's a lovely little bit of kit for displaying your models and things. A um, couple of minor gripes with it. Firstly the top, uh, the mirror on the top is plastic. Um, which I didn't realise and I have actually managed to scratch it. So I might replace that at some point in the future with a bit of actual glass mirror. Um, but more importantly, this thing runs on batteries. If I just fl flip it up, you see there's a battery compartment here. And in there is two C-type batteries. Now the trouble is with this, uh, the batteries don't seem to last very long. And I have yet to find anywhere that sells rechargeable C-type batteries. Now... Anyone that knows me, and if you've been watching any of my videos, you'll, you'll probably know that I don't like throwing things away, um, especially batteries. So yeah, this kind of rankles a little bit. It's very nice having it portable, but I don't like the battery situation. So today we're going to try and rectify that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the battery in here, or the batteries, with a rechargeable one. So let's get on with it. Okay, so I've got the thing upside down on the bench. Um, let's just take the battery cover off so I can show you what's going on in there. So as I mentioned, there are two uh, C-type batteries in here. Now one of the things you'll notice is these batteries appear to be, or in fact they are, wired in parallel. So we've got positive connected to positive and negative connected to negative. Which means that we have, even though we've got two batteries, we've got a total power output of 1.5 volts. So when we wire this up for the new battery, we'll need to take that into account that we only need 1.5 volts. So if I um, put the multimeter on this, You can see no matter where I touch it on either side, we're basically getting 1.5 volts, well 1.58 volts, but you know, 1.5 volts. So the first thing we need to do is take the batteries out, take the back off and see how much space we've got inside so we can see what we can do with this. So I've got the back off now and I just wanted to show you how this thing actually works. Um, it's, it's very basic, very simple. Um, so the motor is here uh, and it's connected to a gear in here, a reduction gear to slow it down. Um, so we've got the negative from the batteries going straight to the motor. The positive goes to the switch. Uh, and then you've got the two outputs, the two live outputs, uh, both going to the positive side of the motor. But if you see the way they've been attached, there's a little um, resistor in here. So if I... I'll have to pick it up because otherwise it will try and spin because it's upside down. If I turn that on, if I put... You see there, we've got 1.3 volts. And on this side, we've got 1.5 volts. So basically there's a little resistor there that's dropping the voltage slightly to make it spin more slowly. So it's very, very simple, very clever. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. Let's get rid of this. So what I've got here are a few bits we're going to use for this job. I've got a charging circuit. You've seen me use these before. It's a little a uh, 5 volt USB charging circuit and I've got a battery this is a, a 1200 milliamp hour 
3.7 volt lithium polymer battery and as you can see there's loads of space inside so we can put this anywhere but we also need to drop the voltage so what I've also got here is a voltage regulator this is a buck regulator where it's adjustable so you put your 5 volts in and then using this potentiometer you can adjust the output voltage so what I'm going to do is we'll put these three components in here um, and we'll use that to power it instead of these batteries although in theory there's no reason why we couldn't leave those batteries in as well but I'm not going to do that, there's no need for that but there was something else that I noticed as well while I was doing this there's um, this thing is obviously designed to be uh, not necessarily upgradable but I did notice when I was working on it there's a little a little button on the outside here and I wondered what that was and then when I looked inside <laughs> here there's uh, a little molded piece and it suddenly occurred to me that this is for a charging point so this is somewhere you can uh, there must be different versions of this one of which has a rechargeable battery in it so because this little if I just pop this out this is basically just a little plastic bung you see I've just pushed it out a little bit it's actually removable uh, and that will take um, a, a charging socket okay so um, I've decided to put the charging circuit here um, I did toy with the idea of actually putting it inside that slot but the trouble is if I do that it's going to make it very difficult to get to the LEDs because um, I need to take the output from these LEDs and move them to the outside of the case so that you can see them uh, and I don't think that's going to work while that's in there so I'm going to put it alongside it. Uh, now I'm going to mark it and cut the hole for the um, plug to go through. Okay, so I've cut the hole for the, um, the plug for the charging circuit. I've also drilled a couple of tiny little holes for the um, fiber optics for the LEDs. And I've just put the battery and the voltage regulator in there just to get a rough idea of where everything needs to go. Um, and what I can do now is start soldering all of this together. So now we've got our battery wired up, we can take the multimeter and we can check and adjust the output so we can get it down to the voltage that we want. So we want one and a half volts. So we put that there, put that there. You see that's reading uh, 3.4 volts. And you can see as I'm turning it, the voltage is dropping. And there we go, 1.5. Now the next thing I need to do is um, connect these fiber optic strands to the LEDs. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of hot glue.
right that's everything uh, hot glued in I've run the uh, cables the uh, fiber optics through to the front and uh, trimmed them off flush there as you can see um, now let's give it a try and see if it works ready contact that works Perfect. Right, now we can put the back back on. Right, so it's all back together. Now let's give it a try and see how it works. So this is low speed. And this is high speed. That seems to work okay. Now, if I turn it around, we can see the charging socket. Let's take a USB plug and plug that in. And You can see the red light there where the battery is charging and when it's charged the top light will turn blue and um, here you can see the blue light where the battery is fully charged so yeah on the whole I'm uh, I'm very happy with this I think that was a nice little project and it means that now this thing will be a lot more reliable so yeah I hope this has been of interest to you. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.